Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name's Lydia and I'm a biology graduate studying medicine in Southampton and I have just finished my first year. Today I really wanted to break down for you how I prepared for the UCAT and my top tips for each section. So I did have to sit the UCAT twice and I'll talk you through my scores and what I got in each section. Now, just to be real with you, I absolutely despised the UCAT. I actually hated it. It really was one of the hardest things I've ever had to do. So if you're going through it right now my heart is with you you've got this it's gonna be okay but yeah just the fact that I had to sit it twice was not very fun and I'm really glad that I don't ever have to do that test again I'm not one of those people that scored in like the top top percentile I think I got top 15% so I don't have an amazing score I just have a good score but that's all you need to get an interview but like I said, I did sit the UCAT test twice. My score the first time I took it was 2,450 and I managed to improve my score the next year to 2,750. And what I'm gonna do is put on the screen now my individual scores in each section. So if you wanna know what they were, you can just pause and have a little look. So as you can see, I improved my score in each section apart from abstract reasoning, which I went down about 40 points in because on the day I just, had some really difficult questions I think. So my first score of 2,450 meant that I didn't get any offers when I applied to study graduate medicine. But luckily my second score of 2,750 was enough to get an interview for graduate medicine at Southampton and I was offered undergraduate medicine at Southampton. Last year I did make a chattier video on how I sat the UCAT both times and mistakes I made the first time and, and how I kind of went back and changed things. So I'll link that video below if you want to go ahead and watch that one as well because that one is more of a sort of story time of both experiences and mistakes I made. But today we are just talking about how I prepared for the UCAT the second time around when I got that higher score. Now the way that I prepared for the UCAT was by doing little and often every day rather than cramming sort of the week before the test and I do think that is the way to crack the UCAT. So for one month I did two or three hours a day every single day without fail and then I actually panicked and delayed my test by another month because I, well, I just chickened out. Even after a month of prep, I wasn't feeling very prepared. So I panicked and I delayed the test from July till September. In that extra month, I had a week off and then I did three weeks again of two or three hours a day. And then in the days leading up to the exam, I was doing six hours, I think. I was doing a lot in the days leading up to the exam, mainly because I was doing two mocks a day and an entire UCAT mock does take a couple of hours. So it definitely did get more intense in the days leading up to the exam. But as you can see over the kind of seven weeks total revision I did, I was only doing a little bit every day. I think it's important to do that because you don't want to burn out. It's better to start fresh every day and just put everything you've got into a couple of hours rather than just you know, doing eight hours a day and tiring yourself out. Do I think delaying my test made a difference? I think it probably did because I just wasn't feeling confident and even though my scores were pretty good, I still just didn't feel ready. And I think it's good with these things to just follow your instincts. The only two things I used to prepare for the UCAT were the Kaplan, preparing for the UCAT book, which I'll put a picture of here, and Medify. Now, you've almost definitely heard of Medify. I absolutely swore by it and would completely recommend it when preparing for the UCAT. I used it religiously every single day. Obviously you do have to pay for it, but I do believe it's worth the money. It's obviously, it's a lot cheaper than doing courses that you have to pay for. So I bought the 30 day subscription and then after I delayed my test, I had to extend it for another month. I think the best things about Medify are the fact you can track your progress in each section of the UK and you can target specific question types. So if there's one type of question within decision making that you're struggling with, you can just go through those questions again and again and again until you get more confident. And that's something I did religiously on there. One thing I would say is I found practicing the UCAT in the morning was much better for me than practicing later on in the evening. I felt like when I woke up in the morning, I was the most alert, the most ready, and if I practiced in the evening, I did find my scores were a little bit lower. I don't know if that's just me. I'm not even a morning person. I do think if you're tired, it is going to affect your score because the UCAT is about being alert and on the ball. So if you are getting lower scores when you're tired, then obviously don't be too hard on yourself. Just think about the fact that on the day of the test, hopefully you're going to get a good night's sleep and you're gonna get it done in the daytime when you're not feeling too tired. So really preparing for the UCAT, I think is about being consistent. Identifying your weak spots is so important and being honest with yourself about where you're struggling. Do not shy away from questions that you don't like and don't be afraid to start doing full length mocks earlier on because you can only really understand 
the amount of things you're going to have to do on the day and the time pressure if you get those mocks going so try to start doing mocks early on even if it's one mock a week another tip is to make sure that you get used to using the on-screen calculator i made the mistake of practicing for the ucat with my casio calculator in my hand because it is so much easier to do that part of the test of the ucat is dealing with things like using the fiddly calculator on the screen and I only really got using the calculator a week before I sat the UCAT. If I had my time again I would absolutely just be using the calculator on the screen because on the day when you're like shaky and nervous it's really like difficult I found any way to get using that calculator. I've had a few messages recently from people saying that they are practicing every day but they're finding that their scores are staying the same or going backwards. Now if that's happening to you don't be disheartened because that actually happened to me as well. There were times throughout my revision that I wasn't improving or I was like getting bad scores. I think you have to remember that some days your head is just not going to be in it and some days you're going to be tired and there's going to be things going on around you that distract you so try not to worry. What I will say is that on the test day even though there is a lot of pressure and I was nervous that actually made me kind of hyper focus the fact you only get that one chance to sit the test means you aren't going to be complacent when you're coming to questions you are really going to read things properly and personally I think you're less likely to make silly mistakes you might make one or two I definitely did but on the day you're going to bring with you all of the things you've learned from practicing and you're going to smash it I promise so don't worry and my final general preparation tip would be to not ignore the situational judgment test now when I put my scores on the screen earlier you might have noticed noticed that the first time I sat the UCAT I got banned two in situational judgment and the second time I got banned three. Now that was completely my fault. I really did ignore situational judgment because on Medify I was getting banned one every time early on in my practice. If it's you and you're getting a high score in a certain section or situational judgment just don't ignore it because it is there on the day and it actually does play quite a big role. I was quite lucky in that the unis I applied to didn't really look at situational judgment and I was tactical with that but I know some unis will only interview band one or band two in situational judgment so it is absolutely so important. I do think that situational judgment on Medify and on the day are very similar. Okay so now I want to run through some quick fire tips for each section of the UCAT. Now there's loads of information on the internet so this is just kind of my two cents and things that I found helpful with each section. So verbal reasoning, never skip a true false slash can't tell question because you've got a one in three chance of getting it right so there's absolutely no reason to skip those questions just put a guess down flag skip move on if you aren't sure for larger bits of text skip to the very end of the paragraph and try and find some sort of conclusion because you're going to get a lot of information from that conclusion and it's going to help you figure out the answer quicker if you have four possible options and you find the correct answer straight away don't waste time going through and checking the other three options stick with the answer you're pretty sure of, flag it and if you have time come back at the end you will waste so much time trying to check that each other answer is wrong rather than just sticking with your gut and going with the one you think is right. If you see text with very complex language, flag, skip, move on. It is not worth trying to decipher. That's what I learned anyway. Those Big paragraphs with massive words are just not worth your time. In contrast, a short paragraph or one or two lines do take that extra time to be careful and reread the sentences because I found the shorter paragraphs are the ones where they try to trick you a little bit more and there are more double negatives and mistakes to be made. So you do have more time on those shorter questions just to quickly double check your answer. Now moving on to decision making. I don't know if this makes me weird but decision making was my favorite section of the UCAT. I think because when you solve a problem I find it really satisfying so I actually did kind of enjoy practicing decision making which meant it was one of my better scores. My biggest tip for decision making is when you start practicing it don't worry about the timing so much. I think the most important thing with decision making is to get used to all the different question types, get used to solving those problems before you bring in the pressure of time so really nail down those question types before you start timing yourself when you're practicing. Sometimes Sometimes I would start working out an answer to a decision making question, get halfway through and realise it was going to take me ages to actually get to the final answer. At that point I would make an educated guess, flag and skip because it was just not worth my time. Obviously a lot of my tips are going to be skip and flag but I feel like that is just something to really remember with the UCAT. Remember that your time is so precious and you need to make sure you are only 
putting time into the questions that are worth it. And then finally with decision making, make the most of that whiteboard or on-screen notebook. I'm not sure what they're doing at the moment because of COVID, but make sure to write things down. Do not be afraid to jot things down. The worst thing you can do is have too much going on in your working memory. If you have too much in your head, you are just gonna panic. So it is worth just jotting things down quickly so it's there in front of you and you can reference it and go back and you'll be less likely to get confused. Okay, moving on to quantitative reasoning. So both times I sat the UCAT, I found quantitative reasoning slightly easier than Medify but again that's just my opinion and what I found on the day but just a little bit of reassurance I found Medify's quantitative reasoning practice quite difficult and not to say I didn't find it difficult on the day but I did do better than I thought I was going to do in quantitative reasoning both times so for me the biggest thing with quantitative reasoning is to be very confident with the simplest math so you have to be absolutely clear on averages fractions ratios percentages get unit conversions clear in your head like kilograms to grams all that kind of thing make sure they are absolutely Absolutely clear so you don't take any time thinking about it on the day definitely practice converting currencies each way and make sure that you have geometric formula very clear in your head and you're familiar with them so on the day you aren't thrown on graph and table questions always double check the table headings I used to lose marks because I would just very quickly read the tables and I get it wrong based on the fact I hadn't read the table heading correctly also make sure you double check the axes on each graph I'm sorry if this all seems really simple but it is just little things like this that are gonna spare you seconds and get you more marks. remind yourself that the maths in every question is actually gonna be quite simple it's just a case of how many steps there are to get to the answer on any difficult question if there's more than a couple steps get used to identifying those questions and remember to flag and skip because it is not worth your time doing a load of maths equations just to get one answer just make an educated guess and move on and finally abstract reasoning now abstract reasoning is a tricky one for me because I actually got a higher score in abstract reasoning the first time I sat the UCAT so maybe I'm not the best person to be taking tips for on this one but I do think it's quite a volatile one in that you can get very lucky and get a good set of shapes or patterns and just bash out correct answers again and again and again on the day I did find abstract reasoning reasoning quite difficult because I think maybe under pressure I find it harder to see the shape so my biggest tip for abstract reasoning is to look for the simplest pattern on or out of all the boxes so you're just looking which box has the least number of shapes in it and from there you can figure out the pattern that is the biggest thing look for the simplest pattern on the page and definitely make sure that you are used to all the different types of patterns that might come up don't forget they might do something like clockwise or numbers on a clock there was loads of those on the day for some reason try and get used to all the different patterns and keep an open mind when you're looking at each set if you are panicking on the day and you're really struggling to find a pattern try to sort of zoom out of the set in front of you and look at the bigger picture of all the shapes together if you've been focusing on one box for ages and can't figure it out it's probably because you're being distracted by one of the distractor shapes so try and zoom out again and start afresh on a different box and again as i've said with every section don't be afraid to guess flag skip because at the end of the day the main thing with the ucat is your timekeeping and making good decisions with your time so with abstract reasoning i did find that at the end i had the most time left i think it's because if you skip one set of questions on abstract reasoning you're skipping like five at once so in my opinion you'll probably have a little bit extra time at the end to go back and check abstract reasoning questions um, so just bear that in mind when you are going through the question those are my quick fire tips for each section and that is how I prepared for my UCAT if you are sitting the UCAT this summer then massive good luck to you it is not an easy job just keep going be consistent and know that once it's over you won't have to think about it hopefully ever again thank you so much for watching if you did enjoy this video please hit that subscribe button and give this video a like and I will see you in the next video Bye.